I'm Sarah Shook. You're listening to Media Monarchy. I'm afraid. Everybody, James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com, and we're pulling it off pretty well to talk to bands in their van here at Tree Fort 2019. We are more than stoked to be talking to our new bestie, Sarah Shook. Thanks, oh, yeah. for, thanks for letting us. Thanks for letting us in yeah, the van. Of course. I think in, on a little bit of level, it was like, oh, we we got to fucking we hung out last night a bunch. Yeah, we I was, did. Yeah. You you even I mean you you welcomed me with with hugs. I didn't know what yeah. to expect. It was just. So in some ways, it's a little bit it's like, well, this is like the formality, because I feel like we hung out and talked about all kinds of maybe maybe heavier shit late last night totally. that we don't totally. have to get into today at all. And, <laughs> and laughed about a bunch of shit. There was a dude last night next to us at the club. This poor man was like on his phone. Great music going on. People everywhere. People dancing. And this dude's on his phone. And he Even held it and, up and at and some point. It up. was like, that can't be. You're like, it's not good. And, <laughs> and he looks over at me and he goes, he's like, oh. I just saw the message on his phone and it said, can you please sleep on the couch tonight? <laughs> I was like, no, Buster. <laughs> like, buddy. Buddy. One man's got it rough. And mm-hmm. I think actually even when we were, because you guys, you you guys jetted off. We we weren't there for a ton more. Yeah. But we, I think the lights were maybe even coming up and he was, he lost something like looking for, I don't know if it was, you know, a charge card or whatever it was. Oh it was my like, God. Man, it's in trouble. Well, <laughs> uh, best to him. I, I hope he's all right out there today. It's because that was, I mean, that was night four. We're here on, you know, day, yeah. day five, final day of tree fort. I just, I, I just so much wanted to talk to you about my, so my last year, my wife and I, we lived in Portland for 13 plus years. Yeah. Our parents, we need to be closer to them. They live in Taos. We moved to Santa Fe last year. Pretty much the week years came out. Yeah. So your last full length has kind of been my soundtrack to the move with the, with all the good and with all the bad. Yeah. So it feels like now getting to talk to you here like a year later is a nice like. That's pretty dope. <laughs> like a payoff in some yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. So how how are you feeling about your last year? Very good. Um, uh, it was insane. We did a uh, hundred and I think close to 140 days of touring in eight countries. Um, you know, have, have we like pushed it harder than we ever have? Like we had our first like 50 day long tour, which was you know 18 days stateside. Got home, had like nine hours to do laundry, take a nap, and then fly to Scandinavia for 32 days. Like it was like intense. Um, but it's it's been awesome, and I I feel like uh, I feel like I'm continuing to grow as a person, which is very important to me because I feel like that is how you grow as an artist. It's like you grow yourself, you evolve yourself, you learn things, um, and your art just like follows suit, you know, it matures along with you. Um, which is something that I, I feel is interesting about like the difference between our first full length record, Sidelong, and our second full length record, Years, is like there's definitely like noted growth. Um, which is which is good because like you can listen back and be like you know I I love side long but it's like reckless and drunk and wild and like blah but that's an accurate depiction of like where I was at the time and mm-hmm. then years you know we put out years and it's like it's a little more polished it's a little more like uh, mature grown up like being a little bit more objective and a little bit less like crazy <laughs> <laughs> but it also got, I mean and it got more it got more attention it got more yeah. love yeah totally. Um, then there was a moment, I was like, oh, they're not going to play Keep the Home Fires Burning. No, all right, fine. I know, and that's <laughs> one of my favorites, honestly. That's, I, I love that one because it's, like, one of the few that we have that, like, is completely jubilant. And, like, there's no, you know, like, there's a little bit of, like, longing for your person and, like, missing your person. Uh-huh. But it's still very hopeful and it's still yeah. very, like, ah, you know. That was probably your your intro song to, to me. That yeah. was probably my first one I heard. That's, that kind of that's awesome. That's, I, yeah, that's so cool. So how did you feel about, cause last night, so last night we were in the Olympic, which was fucking crowded yes. big time. And it's just this old school, the, the venue was on the upstairs. Yeah. Just very beautiful, you know, the old school, the woodwork and all the things packed in there big time. Yeah. Um, and then today, and you guys did, you know, you don't, you didn't play the same set list. Yeah. There's still like the alterations. How does something like last night feel compared to something like this where and you did it feels each main stage band especially in the daytime yeah you start from 
nothing. And yeah, they build them all up and then they're, and then they're gone. Yeah, yeah. So did you, how did it feel today versus last night? It was. I mean, I'm I'm always going to prefer to play a venue, especially a smaller venue that's intimate, where the stage isn't like way off the ground. I like being like on the same level with people and being mm -hmm. there. There's just a more like intimacy to that where there's like this special togetherness where it's just like just because I'm up here singing and you're out there listening we're still equal you know and like it's your role is just as important as my role and I fucking love that um, daytime shows are always more difficult um, and I, I was very happy with like the amount of people that showed up because when I showed up here uh, it was it was like okay but like it, it wasn't packed when you when you rolled in early this yeah. early today okay yeah totally um, but yeah, last night is just like really good energy. And this is only, I mean, like this is our, today was only our second show ever in Idaho. And so last night was our first and I had no idea what to expect. And you know, there's like 15 people in the audience, like singing along, like every freaking word. Um, and that to me is, is just like, that's what it's all about. Because I know that when those people are singing those words, it, they're personalizing it and it's like for them you know what I mean that is like being an empathetic person like that is everything to me it's like yes this belongs to you I, you know I managed to hold it together because it's the same thing because I'm bringing I'm bringing my year of yes of my shit to it which which has been wrapped up but yeah, yeah. good is gone I, I held it together on both on both versions last <laughs> night and today it's like yep getting close but I think okay I think I can I can hold it together yeah I don't know if I was saying this last night but I love the lyric the, the cheapy lyric video for good as gold oh thank um, you and it's similar to your bloodshot label mate I think I said last night I was like I'm pretty fucking geeked on Robbie Falks yeah too. yeah I just lift a country song and and good as gold are both lyric videos using this is my media nerdness it's all public domain right, exactly it's all free footage yes. essentially so just to give credit where credit's due uh nina steiner from bloodshot made that video nice. and she didn't even tell us she was gonna do it and it was this she just like sent me an email she's like here's a link to this thing i made oh, if you like it we can post it and i was like oh my god i was like nina this is awesome yeah wait I, yeah because it's got the which of course then makes me look it up it's like why is there an elizabeth taylor movie that's public domain <laughs> and right. nine times out of ten it's just like they fucked up the paperwork at some point wow. they fucked up and didn't wow so it you know if you if you don't play the legal game right oh abracadabra your yep. shit's public domain yeah that's <laughs> so to have wild. elizabeth taylor crying the like it's just yeah it works really really well that's really awesome. well so I, i've kind of dug that um <laughs> we were also talking because we've been running around we got some smokes together we've had drinks and stuff again but thank you so much for of being course. so open yeah Last night, and I realized, I said this to Matt after we were back at the motel and stuff. It was like, oh, when we met up after your set last night, yeah. and we were going to go out, that there was zero discussion about who's coming out and who's not going out to the bar. So the good boys went home, and we went out. Yeah. Speaking of. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's funny. It just like by this point of being on tour with. Eric, who's like not drinking, huh. and we Kevin. sat. Uh, we noticed his O'Doul's on the stage oh, yes, last night. That was a bit of a, a little reveal. Yes, there's another one too. Uh, Klaus Timer or something like that. Klaus Timer. It's like yeah, yes, yeah. it's like another NA beer, but it's I I love it. I love that he enjoys that and like you know what I mean. Like that makes him happy, and I I just think that's fucking awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we were all like basically standing in an alley <laughs> behind the club, um, and. We were like, yeah, we should go out. I heard about this punk bar across the street here. We should go to that. Um, and <laughs> thank you. <laughs> of course, Matt's, Matt's Matt's part of the team. All right, all right. <laughs> well, earlier I was like, do you want some whiskey? And you were like, you made this face, and I couldn't tell. I was like, do you not want whiskey? I, I didn't catch the offer, but I yeah, oh, I had to. Oh, yeah. I, well, I it got to the today. It was like, Matt, you got to get up. I was like, we gotta oh, get yeah. out, buddy. Yep. <laughs> each each night has gotten successively like late, later and later. Yep. Um. Talked about the club. Talked about the set. Oh. Um. Talked about the video. We talked quickly last night about, and I don't think this is. In fact, I think I can mention. We talked about our church breakups. Yeah. You kind of mentioned you had sort of you've reached a point and you basically stood up and called people out. Yeah. I went the wiener way. 
my parents made me go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night for a long time. When I started to, when I started to work pretty young, you know, as soon as I could mow lawns and deliver papers and that kind of shit, I was doing it. Yeah. I got a, my first like restaurant job. I told, I asked them to put me on Sunday mornings. Oh. So I could God. then go, <laughs> mom, I, I'm the low man, they, like, they I have me. no pull, like, they're putting me on when. So oh that was Lord. the real, like, once I broke that a little bit, yep. it made the escape. Yeah. Came, came pretty, pretty <laughs> soon thereafter. Yeah. So, I mean, de I mean definitely, we're, we're, you know, West Virginia and North Carolina yep. kids. The religion kind of comes baked in. Totally. In a lot of ways. Totally. Do, you, do you still... Do, do you struggle with it at all or any like yeah, nope <laughs> Not, no. Jesus and me or we're fine <laughs> no I mean I, I uh, it's funny because I um, I can't remember if I told you this last night but I came out to my parents as bisexual when I was 19 okay and my dad almost had a heart attack like literally like red face clutched his heart and fell out of his chair on the floor and I was like mom I, we might need to call an ambulance I don't know what's going on so um, I was 19 um, I got married when I was 20 um, I, to a dude I met on the internet. I married him three weeks after I met him and got pregnant two months later. It was like, it was an escape marriage. I was a kid. I was homeschooled. I had, I'd never dated anyone in my life. I'd never even had a fucking relationship. So I went like zero to fucking 60. Um, and so I think my son was... Okay, that was, I was like, do you, do you have a kiddo? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, he'll be 13 in November. I'm gonna have a teenager in November. Um, he's awesome. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. Uh, but he was 14 months old when I left my ex-husband. And I was, I mean, like, I was a single mom at, like, 22. Um, and uh, around, I think I was around 23. It's like, there had always been stuff that, there, there had always been inconsistencies in the Bible. There had always been like things that I was like, this cannot be true if this is true. Like both cannot like coexist. It's not possible. It's just testing your faith. I know. Right. And so I made, that's exactly <laughs> the thing. And so I made this determination and I was like, what's going to happen is I'm going to read the Bible again. I've read it many, many times, but I was like, I'm going to read the Bible from cover to cover. And everything that I've always made an excuse for in my head, or said to myself, you just have to have faith, you just don't understand, I'm gonna be like, no, it's bullshit. I'm gonna fucking call it what it fucking is, and it's bullshit. So I did, I read the entire Bible again, cover to cover, and I had, I mean, like, I had a moment I will never forget on my porch. Um, it, it was a beautiful day, it was springtime, it was sunny, there was a breeze and I was just sitting there like with my Bible in my lap and I was like <laughs> it was terrifying it was terrifying because this is like all I've ever known and and like the the indoctrination of fear and that whole message of just like oh you're going to hell suffering punishment the wrath of God like all of this stuff and I'm like I'm like it's all fucking bullshit it is all bullshit and I just sat there and then I let myself acknowledge that and it was just like the weight of the world off of my shoulders and I'm like I felt like I could breathe for the first time and then immediately I was so angry yeah then the next step then the comes next is... step comes and you're just like my entire life like what and I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm so glad I'm through that phase I think sometimes people that were raised religiously that become or realize that they are atheists uh, I don't think they ever get out of that phase of anger because you feel so many other emotions with it, like betrayal and, um, you know, loss, like loss of years of your life where you put your trust in this thing that's like bunk, you know? I remember just for, as a little kid, and this is the thing I've thought back on, because at least in the Southern Baptist world, it's not, uh, you know, it's not works, it's not this or that. You invite Jesus into your heart, forgive your sin. Like, that's the way you become saved. Right. And I remember as a little kid, like, getting up or going to my parents' room, I was just like, but what if I didn't say it right? Right. The constant fear. The constant fear. Like, what if I didn't do the abracadabra correctly? Like, right. am I going to get there and be like, oh, you, you didn't you say, missed a word. you forgot you to carry the one or something. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, to think back on that. Yes. It's like, it's kind of fucking child yeah. abuse in a bunch of ways. Yeah, it's very, God. it's very abusive. It, it is. And and I 
feel and I'm lucky in a lot of ways. Like I totally I got out pretty good. Same, same. Um, but so so full circle. You know, I I come out as bisexual to my my parents, and my dad almost dies. And I was like, oh my god, if I come out as atheist to my parents. And I was like, like, and I'm like, but you know what? It is what it is. And if they, and I, I was completely prepared mentally. I had, I had like resolved within myself. Like if they disown me, they disown me, whatever. And, um, so my mom came down to visit me in North Carolina when I was 23. And it's funny because my, my parents did not drink at all when we were growing up. Never just like, no, not in the house. And like now that all the kids are out of the house, like my mom loves wine. Like my dad loves scotch. Like it's just, it's it's funny to me. <laughs> um, but so my mom came down to visit me and I got like one of those big ass bottles of wine and we just like sat on my porch and I was like, mm. I really want to tell you this first. Like I, I have to tell dad at some point, but you're here, we're having a good time. And I want to explain to you my, my point of view because, and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't angry or anything. I was like, I just want you to yeah. understand like what I, what I think. And so she just sat there and like, in, like in her chair on my porch and like listening and then she just like got this look on her face and, and she was just like well that's what's been wrong with you all your life <laughs> like she already knew like she did <laughs> i love that about my mom it's like she already knew and uh and and i was like please do not tell dad because i love him and i want this to come from me like i think oh. that's really important and um and so the next time that they came down to visit me uh he and i sat on my porch and uh I was, and I told him and he he listened um, which is something my dad has always been very good at um, he he listened very closely and um, he's like well you know like I've told you my story of like salvation how I got saved and I had this vision of Jesus mm -hmm. and like he my dad was in rock and roll bands like my dad played in like four rock and roll bands got saved and he's like the Lord doesn't want me to play guitar anymore so he like gave it up mm -hmm. Um, and so I, like, I, I told him all of this and, uh, and that was his response. And I was like, you know, dad, um, science has some really amazing, um, explanations for things like catharsis and hallucinations. And don't you think it might be possible that like you were at such a dire point in your life, you were using drugs, you were drinking, you were like, you were just being a wild kid. Don't you think that maybe your brain knew that something needed to happen to like get you out of that cycle? And he was like it could have been scientific it could have been and, and i was like oh my god like this, right. is, this is a conversation it was wild and you know like they're they're still like very they're not like we go to church on sunday morning christians they're like they they truly believe they have a personal relationship with god they read their bible they pray they worship they fellowship with other christians that are very like-minded with them um and and to me it's like um, there's, I, I don't really have as much of the anger that I had when I first like went through that process, mm -hmm. but in general, like my, in general, my anger at religion is massive because it robs people and it's, it's a false joy. It's false happiness. And, um, especially with Christianity, like even if you're like a new Testament Christian, and you're like only going after that angle the it's good like stuff. you know it's still it's still ingrained in there where, where it's like you have to be less of yourself and be more like god and that is like the antithesis of everything that i fucking believe and so uh my boyfriend when we first started dating each other um he uh i went up to harrisonburg virginia to visit him and he left for work i woke up and like made myself coffee I'm looking at his bookshelf. One of the things I love about him is he's he reads good shit. Like his he's got a great fucking bookshelf. <laughs> and um the fucking satanic bible was sitting there and I was like, I should check this out. I'm reading the introduction of the satanic bible and like I had to stop. Like I just I like I stopped and I sent him a message and I was like, Ian I'm a satanist. <laughs> and I was like, and it's not because I've been converted. It's just cuz I always have been this is weird. And then I put my phone down and the next line in the introduction is this cannot convert you. You either are this or you're not this. It like was how? Like, I was like, Oh my God. You know? And it's not like, it's not about rituals and black magic. It's about like believing in your ability to become the best version of yourself or the better version of yourself. 
and and believing in your fellow man to better themselves and to be empathetic and to be progressive and to like mm -hmm. build things and and constantly question everything that you think you know it's it's yeah i'm a satanist mom and dad Hi. <laughs> that's i know and then i was like i lied about you know the job shift on sundays to, to get out of going to church so my my dad played in rock bands he was the singer um he graduated in 69 yeah i think my parents got married born again pretty much 70 71 okay dad was the choir director at the at at my church growing yeah. up and i only as the years went by I was like he directed the choir like he was still in a rock band and even Whoa. though the songs are all lame from the hymns yeah he still made us like you over here do this and okay there's pow 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 power wonder working yeah. like how many times can you say power in the wonder working <laughs> power like he made it fun yeah that's awesome still didn't want to be there but i right. definitely look back and have sort of more, more yes. respect for it i suppose totally because he's, he's like putting his personal touch on it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they, he's, you know, that's where I get my all my chatty chat. Okay. From. <laughs> and my mom is where I get all my like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks for being so, I mean, we're having heavy fucking religious conversations. So we'll wrap all this up by asking the standard question of when are you going back in the studio? Ooh, that's a good question. You're like, don't know. <laughs> um, so the plan early... Or, I'm sorry, the plan late last year was to record the next album this fall. Um, and Or to record maybe a little early in the fall and release it in the fall. Oh, okay. Which is what I'm still pushing really, really hard. Do you want to, you want that feeling of a, of a quick turnaround, I for, do. for lack of a better word? I feel like, you know, we independently released Sidelong in 2015 and Bloodshot picked it up and uh, re released it in the spring of 2017. We released years in the spring of 2018, and like all of the material is there. Um, one for, of one for of, a new record, yeah. Okay. And and like one of the biggest, like un like unforeseen obstacles, just like something we couldn't anticipate, is like we don't have time to fucking practice because we're on the road all the time. And so like before is like we would have practice every week, and it was something that I like always looked forward to because and you know what I mean. Like mm -hmm. it's it is I I am so grateful to have bandmates where there is no like strife there is no ego it's like everybody is like oh shit we're having band practice cool awesome. yeah. we're gonna hang out <laughs> and like do some stuff and like probably like and we've had band practices where we all show up we set our gear up and then we just sit around and talk for two hours don't do any work at all and it's just like that's that is awesome mm -hmm. i love that um because they're your homies. They're your family. Totally. You want to hang out. Like, totally. And you want to hear what's going I like on in their lives. like hanging out with you like, guys. Yes. Totally. <laughs> um, so since we've been like touring so much, you know, we had uh, we had a couple months, November, December, that were relatively slow once we got back from Europe uh, mid-November. Um, and we and we got some practices in, for sure. Um, and stuff is sounding really good. And, um, and when you say practice, you mean rehearsals for new stuff. Pre-production. Okay. Yeah, like straight yeah. up, like we're practicing the new songs for the next record. Um, and I don't want to say too much, but I will say um, that uh, I, I wrote most of these songs in the winter of 2017. And um, I, I I mean, like, they're, they're very different. And I... I Felt, I made demos of them, just mm -hmm. like me, my guitar, my computer, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and then do you, do you send those, share those with, with, with well, the band? Well, before I did that, because I was like, I was like, well, maybe this is a solo project. I don't know. Oh shit. Okay. And so I went to my bandmates and I was like, look, y'all, um, this is fucking different. Like it's really different. And if you want me to just do this by myself, I'll write new songs for the next record. We'll figure it out. And so sent sent them the songs or the files via email, and they were just like, "Dude, like it's it's you, it's still you, it, like everything about it is like very, it it might like genre wise be a little bit of a push in a different direction, but all of our fans are gonna understand it. Like it's mm -hmm. it's still cohesive. You okay. know what I mean? Um, so I'm, and that's such a fucking good feeling too, uh, to, to like have bandmates that aren't just like, oh my God, what's wrong with you? This is not country. Like what, you know what I mean? It's like they they were right there with me. Um, so the, so, well, I guess that's my question and you don't have to answer it. But when you say it's like, oh, it's different directions. Is it, is it softer? Is it harder? Is it 
it's not it's not like so much that it's softer or harder it's that it's like we were just talking about it's like growth and so definitely like lyrically and mentally there's a there's like a step maybe even like two steps ahead mm. where a lot of it is like hey i wish that you would like do this or be this way but you're not and that's okay and I'll accept you where you are and um, there, there's a lot more of a willingness to be vulnerable and visibly empathetic and to say and to me like something that's very important to me with all of this like in all fucking arenas is just like there is no place for ego in what we do there's no place for it because it's not about us it's about people and that is like what fucking matters to me that's that's like the big one for me the security here have been so like caroline rose yesterday played the main stage i saw and some videos <laughs> she's, she's so rocking and because i think yeah. they had done their club show the night before and then did the did the main stage show the next day in the gear and the red and all yes. the stuff and she was doing some things at the front of the stage like kind of doing you know poses and stuff behind one of the one of the big you know big burly security dudes and they yep. just I, I was like I think that dude just became a star <laughs> they're just the security here has been super nice yep. but again not that I'm say, even saying I'm surprised it just comes down to that that's how this shit works Yeah. I love and appreciate every motherfucker like, it's like dude you're standing out here for hours for a fucking week in a, yeah and yeah. it just Oh, yeah, we said it last night. It was like, it's like Fight Club. We cook your dinners, we drive your cars, do not fuck with us. Do not us. fuck with us, exactly. <laughs> That's probably a good way to probably wrap this up. Hell yeah. Sarah Shook, thanks so much for letting us in. Of course, of course. Thanks for having me, all. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Filato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology, and the occult. All remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.